How's it going? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the eFlexonics show. Today I'm going to talk to you about my new microphone setup. I bought a couple of new microphones, I bought a couple of new pre-tube amplifiers and they're quite unique, and I bought a DAW, what they call a DAW, a digital audio workstation. I'm very, very excited because that means that the equipment that I used to use here now in the studio can go out on the road with me to do remote work and it's very, very good equipment. So we're upping our game here on eFlexonics. I'll tell you more about it right after this. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great show. If you're into microphones, hey, what could be better? My name is Rick Holland, your host. We'll be right back. Hello folks, my name is Rick Holland, the owner of eFlexonics Broadcast Studios and I'd like to invite you into our studio for a free no obligation tour. We'd like to help you with your video marketing. You know, video marketing is one of the hottest trends uh, on the internet today and experts say that it's going to stay there for the next five to seven years. Come on into our studio. I think you'll be impressed. We have a green screen section over here. We've got a whiteboard section where we, we track our shows over here. We've even got a dedicated audio booth to my right hand side where we do audio books and I'm sitting in the interview section of, of our broadcast studio. So come on down. If you're in the Fraser Valley and you own a small business, we would love to talk to you. You can get us by going to uh, eflexonics at gmail.com and we'll also put a link to our website just below this video. Thanks for stopping by. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rick Holland and I'm from eFlexonics. Welcome to our show. We are back and today we're going to be taking a look at the new microphones that I got for the studio. This beautiful creature is called the Reactor Microphone from Blue. Now, for some of you, you might look at it and think, oh man, what a butt ugly microphone. I personally love the look. It's kind of a retro, funky looking kind of animal, but uh, don't let the look scare you. It's the sound that is absolutely incredible. Let me show you how it comes packaged. It comes with its own dedicated case. Look at that. Oops, here, I'll do it this way. Okay, so the camera's going to pick that up. Is that gorgeous or what? And when you open it, beautiful case. When you open this case, It's form-fitted, so all the parts fit in there just perfectly. If you have to take the microphone anywhere, gorgeous. Comes with a little book, and I'm gonna, I'm going to read a little bit from the book. And I'll tell you why I bought this microphone. Actually, I loved it so much I bought two. <laughs> Don't tell the wife. <laughs> I bought a lot of equipment in Tom Lee. And I'm wandering around the store with my hands behind my back thinking, how am I going to explain this to the wife? How many days or nights do I have to spend in the doghouse? Luckily, we have a nice heated garage that I was... <laughs> no, I didn't have to spend any time in the garage. So this is the pamphlet that comes with the, with the reactor mic. So let me read a little bit about this microphone. This microphone is very, very unique. What they did is they took the famous B6 capsule from their Kiwi and their, um, I forget what other one. Those microphones cost 1000 and oh, Kiwi and Cactus, $1,000 and $2,000 respectively. This one retails for between five and $600 in Canada. You can get a good deal if you get on to Tom Lee. So let me, let me read this for you. Congratulations on the purchase of your reactor microphone from Blue Microphones. You will probably notice that the reactor looks unlike any other microphone ever made. Hmm, no kidding. And upon first listen, you'll realize it's a sonic standout as well. The reactor microphone features one of Blue Microphone's hand-tuned dual backplate large diaphragm condenser capsules. Now, there's a 1-inch capsule here and a 1-inch capsule here. Coupled with Class A discrete electronics that deliver a clear and crisp sound usually reserved for the most serious professional studio budgets. Class A circuitry, all that means is it's discrete and they run transformerless components. So they run um, very high-end components inside this case here. It'll handle current and electricity better. So you get a better signal, a better uh, flow, better sound out of the microphone. The reactor's unique pivoting head rotates 90 degrees, so this will rotate 90 degrees, this head right here, allowing you to use the reactor in very close miking situations such as 
recording an electric guitar cabinet, and it doubles as an easy way to adjust mic incident angles for fine-tuning of the sonic signature or configuration of multiple microphone setups. See 23, page 23 for de de details. Okay, here's the interesting specifics on this particular microphone. The transformerless solid-state reactor is a great introduction to Blue's multi-pattern -pa microphone lineup. Providing, providing cardioid, which means directional right here, right from, from mouth to here, right to, to the front. Omnidirectional, that means all the way around, so I can get five or six singers around this microphone if I need to. Or bidirectional, or they call it figure eight polar patterns. Figure eight means this is a figure eight here, and this is a figure eight here. So I can have somebody right here and somebody here speaking. The reactor microphone accommodates almost any recording situation. While most microphone manufacturers have treated polar pattern switches as afterthoughts, the reactor's radial design with central pattern control invites the user to explore each polar pattern and discover a new timbre to the sound being captured. Now, right here, do you see that little light on there? It's an LED. In this position, it's another, um, it's, it's either cardioid, polar, or uh, omnidirectional, so you can change it up here, and then you can change it up here, just by turning this dial. The first rule in recording are, there are no rules. So switch away and pick the pattern that best fits your needs and your desired sound. I looked at different manufacturers of microphones. I looked at uh, the famous Heil PR40, and that is a famous microphone that has found its way into radio and television broadcast studios around the world. It is a beautiful microphone. And Leo Laporte of Twit Network loves it because he said he claims it gives the, him that godlike voice. But to me, I didn't want a microphone that would sonically change my voice behavior because I am going to be using this for vocals, for instruments, for uh, commercials, for audiobooks. Further investigation of this microphone, I'll read to you from the pamphlet. In order to provide a consistent response across all three pickup patterns, two single backplate large diaphragm capsules are measured in an anechoic chamber. I don't know if you've ever been in an anechoic chamber, but they are chambers designed to cancel noise. And in some chambers, it is so quiet, you can hear your heartbeat and you can hear the blood rushing through your veins. It's very, very spooky. It's... Uh, you would be very uncomfortable to spend long periods of time, even a short period of time, in an anechoic chamber. They're designed to test equipment, but you'd actually go crazy if you had to spend a lot of time in there. Okay, so... And then acoustically matched for optimal performance. The result is a handcrafted and hand-tuned dual backplate capsule delivering a modern tone with a smooth extended top end. Though designed to achieve a world-class contemporary vocal sound, the reactor addresses a number of different recording needs. When used in a cardioid pattern, re reactor excels at delivering a vocal or solo track right in front of where the mix where it belongs. When detailed high-end smooth mid-range or minimized proximity effect, a bass boost inherent in all unidirectional microphones, in omnidirectional or bidirectional, or when miking at a distance, the reactor delivers every nuance in the room with finely focused resolution and clear musical frequency response. Ideal for live orchestral recording, ambient percussion miking, and choral vocal treatment. Now, I looked at a couple of different manufacturers. I looked at ElectroVoice. I, as a matter of fact, I have a couple of ElectroVoice microphones, the 767s, and they're beautiful for lead vocal microphones. I take them on the road. Uh, as my remote microphone, and I hook them up to my high-definition cameras. I also have a pair of Audio-Technica 2050 AT microphones, and they're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're a side-loading microphone, and that's also um, what I'm going to be taking on the road. So I've got from three manufacturers, and when I was doing the research, this particular microphone met our needs best. The Heil which is a beautiful microphone. It's uh, absolutely gorgeous. It it retails for about four hundred dollars, sometimes four fifty. For just a little bit more, 
you can get one of these blue products. Now, blue is no stranger to high performance microphones. As a matter of fact, they have a microphone that retails for $6,000. Yeah, you heard that right. $6,000. <laughs> so, I mean, if I won the lottery, sure, absolutely, I would. Uh, <clears throat> I would certainly buy the blue bottle. <clears throat> there's, there's a couple of caveats about this microphone. The only thing that I don't like is the shock mount placement and the, to me, it's kind of under-engineered, this little knuckle here. If I were to take this microphone and flip it right side up the way it was designed, there's a lot of weight on that, on that little, on that little coupler. And uh, Blue has had their challenges with this coupler. So I decided to flip the microphone upside down and hang it this way because that way it, it takes off quite a bit of pressure. So I've got a pole that goes up to the ceiling and uh, I just suspend it from the ceiling. I like that because I, I don't like anything in the way. So I can, you know, there you go. This microphone has a couple of really neat features about it. I can change the way it picks up voice. So I can change, I can just tune in the dial and I can just turn it like this. And I can have two people, I can have one person on this side and one and me talking and we can pick up quite nicely from each other and I can just increase the volume on my doll workstation up to uh, 11 o'clock. We're at 10 o'clock now, but up to 11 o'clock and it still picks up absolutely beautifully. So I'll take that down to 10 o'clock. Yeah. And I'll just do like that. So it serves a couple of dual purposes. Also, if, if I have people singing in the studio, I can just take a bungee cord and, and bring this up all the way here so we can have three or four people around this microphone. So this microphone needed to fit into the studio in a couple of different ways. It had to do vocals. It had to do instruments. It had to do audio books. It had to do commercials and voiceovers and things like that. This microphone is known as the workhorse because of that B6 capsule design. So I am extremely pleased and I bought two of them. So if you're looking for a top notch microphone that, that you can get into the B6 capsule with this, it's an absolutely gorgeous microphone. Now, granted, I am running it through a PreSonus pre-tube amplifier. And PreSonus has done something really different with their pre-tube amplifiers. On one side of the pre-tube amplifier, it has um, uh, digital, and it has a digital gain circuit, which you would expect in all amplifiers. But on the tube side, it does not use capacitors, and that has its advantages too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera and spin it around, and you can see my new toys. <laughs> okay, you ready? All right. Here we go. All right. So here is the PreSonos, and it's got a VU uh, level indicator, and I never drive my pre-tube amplifiers hard at all. This is in the 10 o'clock position, the tube, and the gain is in the 10 o'clock position as well. This is 48 volts, and this is my low-pass filter, and this is phase. Now, when you're running more than one microphone, you want to push the phase button. And I'll push these buttons to show you the difference. And now we're going to go with a low pass filter. I don't know if you're going to be able to yeah, see there it goes. It slightly changes the frequency response. So when I have a female voice on this microphone, I would like to use that. Now you're going to find a big difference when I go over to phase. All right. I'm going to keep talking and listen to that. What it does to my mind is it brings the sound of my voice closer to the actually the center of my nose is, is what I'm well I'm, what I'm reading from here. So I'm going to go back and I just wanted to show you the difference. Now it's um, the characteristics are, are a little bit different in my voice again. This is the new Steinberg UR824 DAW digital audio workstation. It is a beautiful piece of equipment and it comes with Steinberg Cubase as well. So there's a lot of instruments. There's a lot. I mean, there's so much software here. I will never be able to use all of it. So it's actually overkill. But really, I won't have to update this thing for years. Now, keep in mind that this particular unit is USB based. 
I was considering FireWire, but uh, FireWire is actually going out, believe it or not, and USB is here to stay. They've got USB 2 now, and they're bringing in USB 3. This is my old board. This is a Yamaha board, and this is a Yamaha product as well, this, uh, this DAW, but this one is going to go out in the road with me. This is also USB based. I would advise anyone that's getting into recording or that wants to do podcasts, go with USB based boards. You can go with XLR microphones, but go with USB baseboards. So I've got two of these pre-tube amplifiers, this one here and this one here, for that microphone over there. See over here? I've got another, got another reactor microphone right there on the other side. And then I have two cameras that I switch back and forth. So let's, let's bring this over here. And there you go. Let's take a look at the pop filter. This is a really ingenious uh, way to do this. It's magnetic, and the pop filter is adjustable. So let's do this. You're going to hear a little bit of a bump. I apologize for that. There you go. Now this pop filter is adjustable. You can adjust it this way. See what I'm doing here? Either closer, is it closer to the microphone this way, or further away from the microphone that way. It just keeps the plosives out of bounds. The reason I have this microphone on a slant is that when I'm using this microphone, I don't really need a pop filter because when I'm speaking, my P's and B's are going right past the microphone. I'll give you an example of this. P, 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 B, B, B. Do you hear that? P, P, P. It's like crushing. But if I go P, 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 B, B, B at the side of the microphone, you never hear that explosive. So uh, let's put this back on. You ready? Mag magnetic. Magnetic. Magnificent. So that's it. It's a, it, it's a beautiful looking microphone. It's got discrete circuitry. It's a workhorse. It will fit into almost any condition or environment you want to put it in a, in a studio. I can put it in my, my audio booth. I can put it in front of my green screen. I can put it in, in, the, in the interview station here. It is just a gorgeous microphone. And for $500 per microphone, I won't have to upgrade this one for many years to come. So, but the only thing is, when you get, my advice is when you get this microphone, hang it upside down like I've got it here. And that takes the pressure off of that, that connection there. In the future, I may get another pole and have something welded on. This is, this is metal here. If, and it's aluminum, so um, I can get somebody to do an aluminum, aluminum weld and put another post here and then I'll have two posts going up and it'll be able to hold the microphone even steadier. And for, you know, probably cost, what, 10, 15 bucks to have something welded on there, another connector welded on. That's what I'm going to do in the future. So this is, Rick Holland, this is my take on, a, on the microphone, on the reactor. This is the reasons why I chose this microphone. A, let's review the B6 capsule. B, it's going to fit into a whole bunch of different environments. C, sonically accurate. Though, if you're just going to buy this microphone and not put it through a pre-tube amplifier, I would suggest you go out and get a pre-tube. As a matter of fact, I'll show you. This is the pre-tube amplifier I started with. It's called an ART. Now, these are entry-level pre-tubes. They say professional. Professional processor series. But all they do is they, they provide a, a tube interface, right? They can be a little bit noisy if you've got something, you know, some electrical motors coming on or fans or, or, or loads on your electrical uh, switch. Then you will notice that noise coming through the line. So um, they're good to start out with, but... That's the reason I upgraded to the PreSonus to uh, Tube Pre V V2. Now these ones will be going out in the road with me, with my Audio Technicas. Great little units. I mean, I paid uh, I can't remember about seventy five dollars for these. I think. And then I put. Oh, that's another thing. Really, really important. When you run a pre-tube amplifier like the ART or the PreSonus, get rid of those cheap. Chinese tubes. They are absolute garbage. They fail. They have a high failure rate and they don't give you warmth and richness. Go to a store like Long and McQuaid or Tom Lee or wh whoever that sells tubes and ask for Russian tubes. There's only three factories in the world that make Russian that make the tubes. 
that are warmth, uh, that have warmth and richness. So automatically, I switch the tubes in these, and I switch the tubes in the PreSonus tube amplifiers right away. Because you want the reason you buy a pre-tube amplifier is because of the tube, right? The circuitry in the tube. Get rid of those cheap Chinese tubes. Now, this is Rick Holland for blue microphones. And keep in mind that these guys, as I say, they're no stranger to, to producing a beautiful quality product. They make a $6,000 microphone. So they're well respected within the industry. They have great technical support. I've never been disappointed with a blue microphone product. And uh, they're kind of funky and retro looking at the same time. So I hope to see you again, folks. Thanks for coming by. This is Rick Holland for eFlex Honest. We'll see you next hardware review. Take care. Bye-bye.